Hi guys, this video I will be doing a Halloween stiletto nail sets. Um, I did six of them. I wasn't sure if I was going to do six, seven, eight, but I ended up doing six. I do use my alpha brush, which is my favorite acrylic brush. And most of the nail acrylic that I use is my own glitter mixes or my own color mixes. But the ones that are brand name or anything other than what I make myself, I will link down below. So I start off with this green glitter that I made. And I did use this on my previous nail Halloween set as well for the Joker nails. And I wanted this to be a nice little background to the nail set that I'm doing. This one will be pumpkin nails. And I wanted it to look like they were laying on grass. And that's the vibe I was going for. Now, like I, you've seen in my videos, I work with really small beads of acrylic. It's just preference. You can't just get a bigger brush of size 14 or 16 and get one single bead and just do the whole nail if that's what you choose. But um, here I just do different beads. I am careful with this glitter because this glitter is a little bit more chunky. So if I brush it down while it's still really wet and not dried yet or close to being dried, it will leave patches. So I'm working very slow with this to make sure that it's a thin amount and I don't need to have a thick nail. Now I'm just going to encapsulate it because I'm fully satisfied with this before I apply the pumpkins. In case I mess up, I can just swipe off the pumpkins and I can just file and buff and clean it off and start over. Or if anything, you know, I always like to encapsulate my glitters and seal them before I move on to the next step. So here I'm just grabbing an orange that I made as well and I am just making sure that the beads are more on the drier side if I can and if they're not dry enough I just put them on the nail and I wait a little bit before I start working with it because I don't want it to move around too much. I do pat it down but not overly pat them to the point where they look like um, completely sealed down to the nail because I did want to give some sort of dimension to the nail. I wanted it to be seen like they are popping out but when you look at the nail from the side when I encapsulate them, they're actually inside the nail. So that's the look I was going for. And when I put the beads, I give it a few seconds and then I pat it down just a little bit and I start digging the top of the pumpkin because that's where I'm gonna put the little stump, is that what you call it? <laughs> the little brown part of the pumpkin on top. So I wanted to give it some space to make it look more realistic. And this orange is a glitter orange. I could use a solid or you could use a solid. You could even go in there and detail the pumpkins. Give some shadows to them. Even do some fun uh, designs and fun little other glitters on there as well. But I just wanted to go more on the simple side. And this one was a little bit more of a wet bead as you can see. So I'm just patting it from the sides making sure that nothing pops out from the sides. And I'm very gentle with the brush. I don't want to overwork the acrylic because it's still wet. So I want to make sure that... I work it very gentle and not overdo it so I don't dig any crazy holes or anything like that. I still want to keep its nice little 3D shape. And I decided why not go for another one that fits there as many as I can put so they look like they're just on top of grass. And I do the exact same step here. Anytime you want to do any type of 3D on top, you can always take off some of the monomer, some of the liquid with your paper towel and that works amazingly. Now I'm going in with a way smaller brush. I got this brush either from AliExpress, eBay, or Amazon. I cannot remember. This was when I first started doing nails. And it is a size 4 if I can remember correctly. And I love really small brushes for the small details with acrylic. And this is where I'm getting the brown acrylic. And I'm using this as the little trunk, as the top part of the pumpkin. And um, you can, like I said, outline it. If you grab like a really thin brush and outline all this, it would definitely pop a lot more. It is definitely preference. And I apologize for my camera. It was going in and out, in and out. I was trying my best to fix it and I try to keep an eye on it as much as I can. So that is what I'm doing with the brown. I'm just making sure that they all have the trunk on top so that they're ready and set to go.
Now I'm going to be using these Mylar glitter pieces. I got these from AliExpress. I mostly get all my nail art either from Ally, eBay, Amazon as gifts from students. Um, I, I just get them from different places. There's not like one specific, but the one that I go to a lot is AliExpress because they're so inexpensive and they work just as good as the more pricier ones. So I am using the Mylar pieces. I used ones that kind of when you, when you turn them, depending on the angle that you turn the nail, kind of reflect like a neon orange and that just looks so nice on these nails so that's what i'm putting in between the grass just to give it another pop of color and i am putting very very small beads of acrylic to adhere the mylar pieces you can do glue too if that's what you choose and now i'm just grabbing very wet beads to encapsulate i do very wet beads because i want to make sure it gets in between all those pumpkin 3d art that i did because if i just grab one big bead and go down i could ha possibly have a ton of air bubbles because of how many little cracks and little spaces there are in between each pumpkin. Once that is fully dry, I go on and just file it and buff it and shape it. And when that's done, I will be top coating it. I am now working on my next nail design and I will be using just solid black acrylic just to do a nice little background the foils that i will be using i want them to pop so a black background is amazing for that and remember i'm using nail tip practice nail tips so i'm not worried about structure or building any kind of apex it's just a design that i'm showing you and once this dries i will be ready to go ahead and use the daily charm foil transfer gel this one you do cure it in the lamp so I apply it very thinly. I just make sure I go over it very well because I want to make sure I get every side that I need, especially when you want to do a full nail of foil. And I cure it. After it's cured, I go on and put the foil. I am so sorry I went off camera. And I just literally dab the foil on top because the whole point is just I'm trying to get like these patchy looking designs on there. If you want a solid one, you would definitely be very gentle and make sure you get every single side of the nail, the side where the free edge, very smoothly. But here I just wanted to make it a nice little standout pop look. So we'll go back to that one as soon as I get into the encapsulation part. Here I'm moving on to the next nail set. I wanted to do some sort of marble weird blending. <laughs> I'm not the greatest at marble, but I still went for it. I said, why not, right? So here I just use white, I use yellow, and I do use a yellow glitter that I made myself, as well as some orange and some orange glitter. And I just move it around until I find exactly the design that I want. I do tend to overwork when it comes to marble, and that is just because it is I, I don't get satisfied with the first look. I like for it to really look very blended, but you can stop yourself way beforehand too if you want more of the solid color look i just like to really mix up the colors and you got to work fast when you're working with marble and acrylic because it will start drying and it'll be harder to blend and move around especially if you're doing a full nail um, a long nail you know specifically so you want to move a little bit faster and you want to work with really small beads because you do not want to make the nail thick because after you do this you no normally would encapsulate either with gel or with acrylic unless you just want to buff it and file it on top but since i did use some of my own glitters and colors that i made myself i know for a fact they're not strong enough to just be filed on on top that is why i encapsulate them but most acrylics will be strong enough to be able to file down on top except for glitters glitters always need to be encapsulated or sealed before filing so here i'm just encapsulating it with a nice layer of acrylic now at the same time i'm using this with the netting. What I'm using is a fabric that I got from Joanne's fabric and it's netting. So I did do a little bit thicker encapsulation. As soon as I encapsulated, I literally counted just to like 15, 20 seconds and I went right on top to do this because the acrylic dries super fast. So I went on top, I pressed by the cuticle area and I made my way down to press down because I wanna make sure the effect of the netting gets into the acrylic. And I was, you'll see, it's kind of like that mermaid vibe. And it looks so pretty. I've, I've made a mermaid one before. I'll link that video down below so you guys can see it. 
but for this one i just did a very thin layer of black and then i wait till it dries and then i get into filing it once it dries i go and file right on top of the black i do not encapsulate the black because i do want it to look kind of dirty and like if i scratched it and if i messed it up that's the look i was going for so i did not worry about encapsulating it because you gotta file down the nail so that you see the netting part of it so that is what i'm doing i filed it off and then i will top coat it so moving on to the next nail set for this one i also used very similar colors as the previous one but i wanted to do kind of that candy corn vibe so i did an ombre i started off with the yellow i brought that down i will then move into the orange and these are all solid colors and then i will go in with the same colors but in glitter form so the glitter is a little bit different for the orange one it's a little bit deeper for the yellow it's a little bit brighter but it's still in that color scheme because i felt like the glitter would just blend that so much more and I wanted to give that shine and pop. But you can definitely just do it with solid colors and it would work just as great. It really depends on what you like and what your clients like. But me, I just can't seem to live without glitter. Glitter, seriously, I get so excited when I see anything glitter. So I always have to add it. I always try to tell my clients, ooh, try this, try that. And it's out of their comfort zone, but they end up letting me do it anyways. <laughs> I just have to talk them into it. Now I'm using here just a straight up white acrylic and I'm using it on the tip and I'm bringing that up. Now I'm not wor too worried about the blend because I still have the white glitter that I have to blend and the orange glitter that I have to blend down. So that's not a big worry for me. So like I said, the orange is a little bit darker, but it's okay because it would work perfectly. It gives it an extra layer of 3D dimension kind of effect. So once I'm satisfied with that, I will go in and move with my next glitter, which is kind of an off-white opaque glitter. It's very, very chunky. You'll see it on the table. I spilled it everywhere because I, I spill everything, you guys. If I leave something open, it is there because I will spill it. That's literally what it's meant for. So I just laughed at myself and I was like, I should probably left this in the video. But then I was like, no, it's a hot mess. So I... I I did that part <laughs> now you will see that once i finish those two previous nails i will be encapsulating them but i decided to encapsulate them with hard gel the reason why is because it's i love the effect of hard gel it's just so crystal clear and yes there is crystal clean clear acrylic that you can use and if you take care of your brush and you, you don't contaminate it or anything you will get that same effect but i just i love gel layering it on top of amazing designs i just i love doing that and you definitely can't combine acrylic and gel and gel and acrylic poly gel and acrylic everything you can combine everything you just gotta make sure you properly have it done before adding a different type of nail enhancement to the nails so here i just encapsulate it and it'll stick it will not pop off because the acrylic is in there and you gotta remember you know any type of nail enhancement will stick to nail enhancements. You just have to know what to put when and what type of order to do it. But I always do this. I always do everything because I love designs with acrylic. It's just so much more fun. And then I just encapsulate with gel. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. And like I said, I'm not worried about no apex. I'm just doing a nice, nice, decent layer on top, making sure that it's at least even. But if it was a client or if it is your nails, you want to very be very careful with your apex and make sure it's strong enough, especially for this length of the nail. Now, once it's all dry, clean it with uh, alcohol and uh, lint-free wipes, and then I just get into shaping and filing. So for this ombre nail, I decided to use uh, like a spider stamping yeah, design. <laughs> And I use my stamping tool and I did just the spider on top just to give it more of a Halloween vibe. Nothing too crazy. You can definitely do the spider 3D, 3D with gel or acrylic or whatever you choose. Um, here I just want it to be more on the lenient side. I, I'm not really 100% on stamping but I'll link down below all my stamping stuff that I have if I can still find the links to it. For the next nail, these are the 3D like glitter chrome art shapes that i love to use for this one i would say this one is my least favorite i really for some reason in my head i felt like this nail was gonna be so good i felt like it was gonna be 
bomb. I don't know. I just, then I did it and I'm like, I don't know if I like this. So I kept it on the video because I was like, this is different. You know, it might be really nice for some people and it might be very easy actually. So I just left it on there. I'm like, maybe because just because I don't like it doesn't mean that you will not like it. So I left it on there just just because you know i did do like two more other than these but those were just not really halloween so i just kept those out so the first thing i did on this one is a very thin layer of gel and then i just added a ton of glitters my mylar art and different color orange black purple anything halloweenish on the nail and after i do this i put it in the lamp to cure this because i want the acrylic i mean the art pieces to stay on the nail. I don't want them to move around when I encapsulate the nail. And you can actually also do like stamping underneath. If you do spiders or if you have 3D spiders or anything and then encapsulate it with gel. That would look so cool if you do it see-through. But um, I was thinking of see-through but then I was like that's just so common. You just see see-through crystal nails all the time but it, I probably should have left it that way. But I decided to, after I fully encapsulate this nail, I decided to go in with my black jelly polish. And these polish are very inexpensive. I have a whole video of me testing these out and really truly enjoying them. So I'll leave that down below because they are, I think they're worth it. Instead of making your own, these are gel so you can cure them and they harden and get, you know, and work really great for gel manicures or on top of any product like poly gel acrylic or regular hard gel so that is what i will be using and i do file this nail just like i did the previous one that's why it looks so slick now and that is the jelly polish it is kind of like you know when you go to church well if you do go to church and those windows look so amazing with different colors but you can kind of still see through that is what the polishes do and you want to work in thin layers because if you don't, you'll start getting an uneven color. So I do work two thin layers into here. Each layer gets cured 30 seconds. And I did get this from AliExpress, if I can remember correctly. Either way, I'll have it linked down below. And I'll have the video so you guys can watch all the colors I have. And choose which ones you actually want to buy. So you don't sit there spending money on colors you don't like. And see here, it looked kind of nice. Because you can still see the dark. But I don't know if I did like the outcome of it. I'm not sure. Maybe... Maybe it's just me. <laughs> this is the next nail and this nail will be a cut out acrylic nail, which is honestly my favorite type of nails because they just look so detailed and so nice, but they are a lot of work. And I start off with the bead of orange. I wanted to start off with the orange because it's just such a beautiful pop of color. And once I am happy with that, I let it get to be matte and you can cut it with a blade a very dull blade I have an exacto blade I usually use but for these tips I felt like it just didn't work as good as working on a person or working on my practice hand so for here I just waited till I dried I try to clean it up as much as I can with my brush and I do do the same type of lines from the cuticle and the free edge to kind of sandwich it in the middle if that makes sense so kind of I wanted to be have the parallel effect of the nail so once it's dry, then I just go with my nail file and I just file it. And this is more work than just using an X-Acto blade or any type of blade that cuts it and makes a nice design. But this is a nail tip. It is a lot more flimsy, so it moves a lot. And if I cut it, it just it just didn't cut right. It was making waves. I can't explain it. But um, it worked fine. I really tried to clean it up before I had to do all that filing. And it, it wasn't too bad. I didn't go crazy with my lines. I didn't do them too thin or too crazy <laughs> so here's the black and i'm just trying to clean it off so i don't have a lot of filing to do and i'm going to do the exact same thing once i am satisfied with that one in the bottom one and i just go with that i i do i did know that i wanted to do a foil here because one of the foils that i really like is a skull like a silver chrome skull with the black background i love that one and i did a full set on someone i think it was my sister i don't remember who it was but um i did a full set you can definitely check it out on my instagram and it looks so good so i wanted to incorporate that for this halloween as well 
and I wanted to do the center of the nail. That's something I did know. I still wasn't sure if I was going to leave some clear on the nail, but I ended up doing some glitter because, you know, I can't do nails without using glitter. <laughs> but um, yeah, just clean it off here, wait till it dries, and then go into filing and do all the steps that exact way. When I do get into the glitter, I do encapsulate the glitter. So I'll apply the glitter and then clean it up and do a very thin layer of clear and then wait till that dries and then file it to clean it off so since i wanted to make sure i had enough space to do the foil because the foil is going to go on top of this bead of black i wanted to do that first before i get into the glitters just in case i didn't have enough space to do at least three to four skulls in there i wanted to show off as much as i could but not overly power power the nail if that makes sense So I don't know if you can tell on the previous glitter, but I did use this is the same orange glitter that I used on the previous nails. But as soon as I laid it down and was satisfied with the amount and the coverage on there, then I went ahead and added some mylar pieces of glitter because it just tends to give such a dimension and such a depth to the nails. And the mylar pieces that I used are off orange and every time the light hits it it kind of has a reflection of like a neon orange slash neon green and i really do like that for the halloween nails so that is what i applied and then i do a very thin layer of clear wait for that to fully dry file it and buff it and then i go back in with my daily charm foil gel polish and only apply this where you want i did even think of doing the other thin black ones but then i was like that's going to be so out of the lines and it's just, <laughs> it would be fun but i just wanted to keep it more in the center of the nails but you can definitely add more other things and this is the foil that i really like and i this is like my third or fourth one because i really do like this one and i apply it on the top of the nail and you gently want to rub it with the warmth of your fingers it just will slide right off as soon as it adheres to the nail. And you do want to do the nail design upwards so that the back of the design goes directly onto the gel. And it will go in so smoothly with this gel foil polish. It is amazing. I love it more than regular glue for foils. Those you have to wait to dry. But um, this is the outcome of them. Now, I did not have the part where I top coat them. I'm sorry. I apologize. I don't know what happened. I don't know what's been going on with me and the top coating part of the nails. But this is the final look. And I hope you guys did like them. This will be the last Halloween set that I will be doing. And I will be doing a ton more things. Videos, keto, makeup, more nail art. So thank you guys so much. And hope to see you on the next video.